Good evening, everyone, and welcome. My name is Melissa Armo, and I own the Stock Swoosh, and I wanted to give a brief lecture tonight on focusing on goals. Sometimes it's hard to focus on a big long-term goal if you have many things going on in your life. For example, you've got kids, you've got family, you've got brothers and sisters, you've got a spouse, maybe you're taking care of your parents, you have a job, you have a house to take care of, a yard, maybe you even have two jobs right now. So sometimes it's really hard to focus on the long range goals you may have for yourself. What might some of those goals be? To buy a bigger house, to move to a different area, to improve your financial situation, to save more money, maybe to, to quit your job and, and, and train for a living, or maybe even save for retirement. It's hard and challenging sometimes to ever make progress with future big time goals when we're trying to deal with the day-to-day -day things in life that we have to keep up with. And, and the interesting thing is with the invention of the internet and the way that we've become so glued to our phones 24 seven, it, it becomes very challenging to sometimes not focus on things that aren't important that keep coming at us every day. And, and I find that for myself too, because there's so many different things that I'm juggling right now and focusing on as well. But you have to live in the moment, whatever you're doing and do it well, but you still can't lose sight of the bigger picture and the goal. So how do you, how do you find, how do you do it? How do you find the time to achieve your long-term goals when you're constantly being bombarded with all the things you have to deal with in a given day's time. And obviously you have to sleep. And sleep is very important. That's something that I definitely, definitely think everyone needs to have at least seven, eight hours of sleep a night. It's funny because if we didn't have to sleep, we'd actually get everything done and we'd never be behind in every, anything. <laughs> But we do need sleep and it's very, very important. And six, you know, six hours is okay. Any less than five really isn't enough. Eight is ideal and even nine is good. And, you know, some people are so busy with their jobs that they very often catch up with sleep on the weekends, but that's not good enough. You need to be in that good REM sleep every single night, seven, seven nights a week. And so that means you've got to get seven, eight hours at least to get into that REM sleep. And was getting back to what I was saying, in order to get to the point where you are working towards your long-term goals, you've got to set aside and have a plan of action. Take a set time, whether it's daily or whether it's maybe three times a week minimum to work on those future goals. Because if you don't, by the time Monday starts and then Friday rolls around and you say you're going to get to something on a weekend, all of a sudden before you know it, it's Sunday, two o'clock in the afternoon, and you don't feel like dealing with anything and you didn't get what you really wanted to get done and you never spent any time to work towards your goals. And I'm going to use my class as an example because, for example, my class, the Golden Gap course, is in an entire weekend. You have to set aside an entire weekend to do the class, all day Saturday and all day Sunday, which, which is a lot of time. But you learn so much information and the class is worth it. And it's only one weekend out of your life. If you don't make the time to do things every week at the, at the very minimum every month, okay, consistently a few times a month, then it's, you're never going to achieve those long-term goals. And all of a sudden, 2018 becomes 2019, and 2019, it becomes 2020. And you're in the same dead-end job, and you're not making the money you want, or you look at your, your savings account, and there's nothing there. I know that it's challenging because, you know, I'm, I'm wrestling with that myself, and I don't even have kids or a spouse yet. So, you know, I'm at the point where I'm realizing, it, it again, it takes focus. It really takes having a plan of action. I'm going to tell you this. And I know you're gonna you're gonna laugh at this one, but I like to buy notebooks. I know you're gonna just laugh at this. These old old notebooks that I love to buy. These are paper notebooks. It's the ring binder ones. You can get the big ones. I also have a bunch of the small ones. I, you're just gonna laugh and laugh at this because I really do. This. I have some little miniature ones. I have the small ones too. So this one I haven't even started yet. Actually, this is a brand new one that I just got. Um, I don't have anything in it yet, but I like to make lists, okay? And then I set goals for myself making the list. So I have all kinds of lists. So I've got a list of what I have to do today. I have a list of what I have to do over the weekend. I have a list of what I have to do this month. I have a list of what I have to do for the business. I have a list of what I have to do for TV. I have a list of what I have to do for, you know, maybe something like balance my checking account, whatever do the laundry. I have all these lists and this, this helps me, keeps me organized of what am I supposed to do? And then 
and then you prioritize what you're doing. And this helps you get to your long-term goals as well. And then it makes it seem more manageable. I, I love writing things down and I'm really big on that actually when I teach. When you when you write stuff down, it makes it real for you and we don't do enough of that any, anymore. Everything is on the computer, everything is typed, everything is online, everything is in your phone. When you write something on a piece of paper, it, it really helps you learn it better. And also it makes you more accountable to yourself when you have goals and things you want to achieve. And you go back and you say, and even even I have things I've written from gosh, you know, forever ago. And I and I look and I say, Oh, I didn't do that thing. I told myself I was gonna do that thing. I gotta it's time to get that done. I'm getting that done by the end of today. And then it really makes you feel accountable because it keeps you up to date with your goals and things you want to do. Make lists, make a plan of action, write it down. It helps you. And I'm telling you, if you have long-term goals, you have to decide how you're going to achieve them. If, if you don't do anything at all, anything on, on any given month to get towards your long-term goals, you're never going to, how's it ever going to happen? Like you think you're going to get all caught up. You think you're going to save all this money to trade at some point. You think you're going to get all this time off work. You think all these things are going to happen. You're going to win the lottery, whatever. No, it, that's not realistic. Common sense says that you take bits and pieces of it and you slowly step your way towards achieving your goals. Have a plan of action. Do something every week to achieve your long-term goals so you get there. And you're going to get there a lot faster. And you're also going to feel more motivated to get there faster. And you're going to feel more productive too. Okay? All right. Hope you learned something from this tonight. Have a great night, everyone. Email me and Melissa at thestockswish.com if you have any questions.